Hello, boys and girls. We are adding and subtract, or uh, working on addition and subtraction equations. This is 3 2 from your textbook. And our learning target for today is I can solve addition and subtraction equations. Okay, some things to think about uh, as we go through this lesson. Think about what you know about the equation x plus 5 equals 8. Okay. It might be easy for you to find the value of x. Okay, think to yourself, is that easy? Is it a little bit more difficult? Also, think, how would you explain this to someone that it's not so easy for? So, for you, it might be really easy to solve for x, but for somebody that doesn't understand it quite so easily, how would you explain it to them how they could solve for x? Okay, some, a main idea, one thing that we need to remember as we're going through this lesson and throughout um, this unit is that whatever you do to one side of an equation, you must do to the other side of the equation in order to keep the sides equal. So think about your inverse operations that we talked about in the last lesson. Okay, Those will help you solve for the unknown variable. And again, remember the inverse of subtraction, or sorry, of addition is subtraction, and then the inverse of subtraction is addition, and then the inverse operation of division is multiplication, and then going the other way the inverse operation of multiplication is division. Okay, here are your steps for solving one-step equations. First, we write the equation. Then draw your slide or the train tracks. We'll show you what that looks like. Use the inverse operation to isolate the variable. Isolate means get the variable by itself. Then we solve for the variable and then check your solution. Okay, so let's look exactly what that means um, in relation to solving these equations as far as addition goes. So we're looking at this equation, x plus 6 equals 4. Okay, so what we're going to do, we have our equation written. Okay, now we are going to do the inverse operation. So we're looking at the left side here where the variable is. We want to get that x by itself. And right now, we have x plus 6. So we need to get rid of that plus 6. And in order to do that, we use the inverse operation. So the opposite of addition is subtraction. So we're going to subtract 6. And again, whatever you do to one side, we have to do to the other side. Okay? So I'm going to draw this. That's my kind of equal sign. So we're going to look at what that means. So we have the x, a positive 6 minus 6 is going to give me 0, so we don't have to write anything there. 4 minus 6, so we can go back to our subtracting integers. If I have 4 and I'm taking away 6, I have negative 2. Okay. So I got x by itself, I solved for the variable, x equals negative 2. Now I'm going to go back and check my solution. I'm going to plug this negative 2 back into here. So, as I check, negative 2 plus 6. Negative 2 plus 6 is 4, so therefore our answer is correct. Okay, next one to try, y plus 9 equals 22. Okay, our equation is written. Now we need to get the variable by itself. Right now it's y plus 9, so we need to get rid of that plus 9. We do so with the inverse, so subtract 9 from both sides. Okay. So now we have y. 9 minus 9 is 0, so that can be left off. We're going to keep these all lined up, so we bring our equal sign straight down. We bring our y straight down. Okay, Everything just carries directly down. Now, 22 minus 9 equals 13. And as a check, I'm going to go back and plug the 13 into my equation. So now we have 13 plus 9. Well, 13 plus 9 is 22. So therefore, my answer is correct. Y equals 13. Next one. Negative 5 equals g plus 6. We have the g plus 6. We need to get the g by itself, so we do the inverse operation, which is subtracting 6 from both sides. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Okay, 
Now our stuff carries down exactly lined up. So 6 minus 6 is 0. Carry down the G. Negative 5 minus 6. So I'm already negative, and I'm taking away more negatives, or I'm subtracting more. So I'm going to be at a negative 11. You could do your chop minus. Negative 5 plus negative 6 is negative 11. Plug our answer back in to check. <coughs> negative 11 plus 6. Well, I know that that's negative 5. So therefore, our answer is correct. Okay, a couple here for you to try on your own. And then come back and check. M plus 4 equals 15. Subtract 4 from both sides. M equals 11. Plug this back in as a check. Plus 4. 15 equals 15. So M equals 11. 5 plus H equals negative 7. Subtract 5 from both sides because we have a positive 5 here, so the opposite is subtracting. So h equals negative 7 minus 5. We're moving more farther to the left to negative 12. Plug this back in. 5 plus negative 12. Yep, they work. So h equals negative 12. Last one. Negative 3 equals f plus 4. Subtract 4 from both sides. Negative 3 minus 4, negative 7. Plug this back in to check. I have negative 7, and I add 4 to it, so that's going to give me negative 3. That works. So F equals negative 7. All right, now we are looking at <coughs> solving one-step subtraction equations. Same steps as before, but now our inverse operation of subtraction is going to be addition. So x minus 2 equals 1. I need to get the x by itself, so I do the opposite, or the inverse operation. So instead of subtracting 2, I'm going to add 2, and whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Carry down my x. Minus 2 plus 2 is going to give me 0, so those cancel out. Bring down my equal sign. 1 plus 2 equals 3. Now I can go back and check. So 3 minus 2. Well, 3 minus 2 equals 1. Therefore, our answer works. So x equals 3. Next one, y minus 3 equals 4. Again, we need to get y by itself. And since it's y is being subtracted by 3, we do the inverse of that. And we add 3 to both sides. Carry down my y. And my equal sign. Negative 3 plus 3 cancels out. 4 plus 3 is 7. Now let's check. 7 minus 3. That equals 4 on both sides. So yes, y equals 7. Next one. Negative 8 equals g minus 6. Okay, we have our equation. Now we need to isolate our variable. And we would do so by adding 6 to both sides. Since we are subtracting 6, we do the inverse. Carry down the g. Negative 8 plus 6 is going to get me to negative 2. So now I can go back and plug that in as a check. Okay, I have chop minus negative 8 equals negative 8. So our answer, negative 2, does work. Okay, so just like addition, but now we're just doing the other inverse, or our inverse of subtraction, which is addition. Okay, here's some for you to try. M minus 7 equals negative 12. Add 7 to both sides. I'm just going to kind of zoom a little. M carries down. The 7s cancel. Negative 7, or sorry, negative 12 plus 7, so I have a negative and a positive. Find the difference between them, which is 5, and I have more negatives, so my answer is negative 5. Plug this in as a check. Negative 5 minus 7. 
I can chop minus. So now they're both negatives. Add them together. That does work, so our answer of negative 5 works. Negative 5 equals h minus 6. Add 6 to both sides to get the h by itself. And I do expect you to show each of these steps as you are going through and solving these equations. Negative 5 plus 6, well, our signs are different, so we find the difference between them. The difference between 5 and 6 is 1, and we have more positives, so it's a positive 1. Plug it back in to check, which we must do. Okay, 1 minus 6, we could chop minus it. Get negative 5 on both sides, so that answer does work. H equals 1. One more for you to try. Negative 18 equals F minus 4. So we do the opposite of subtraction, which is addition. Okay. Negative 18 plus 4. So let's say the temperature is negative 18 degrees out and it rises 4 degrees. It is now going to be negative 14 degrees outside. We plug this back into check. We can chop minus. That works, so our answer of negative 14 is correct. Okay, here are some properties of equality. So this is something that we need to know. So the subtraction property of equality, it says that if you subtract this, we want to make sure we write down, if you subtract the same number from each side of equation, the two sides are still equal. Okay, so whatever you do to one side, you do to the other, and it still is equal to each other. So this, using letters, a equals b, okay? So then if we took a minus c and b minus c, they would still be equal to each other. Okay. And then there's some numbers there to show you. If we have 6 on both sides and we subtract 2 from both sides, we get the same answer. And then our algebra, this is what we just found. Subtract 2 from both sides, and the equations are still the same. Okay, and here is our addition uh, property of equality. So if you add the same number to both sides, then the sides still remain the same. Okay, so just like with subtraction, but now with addition. So if we have A equals B, and we add C to both sides, they still equal the same. And then you can look at how that looks as numbers and with our algebra. Okay, you can go back and rewatch any part of this video. Otherwise, look in your book for examples or the tutor videos on the online textbook. Otherwise, go and take your 3-2 Naiku at this time.